welcome back to Office Hours here at the Professor's Kitchen where I sit down with my cup of tea and patiently wait for my students to arrive. About how it usually goes. Today we are continuing our discussion about Black History Month. In a moment I will whisk myself away into the kitchen. Get it? Whisk. <laughs> okay. I will whisk myself away into the kitchen to prepare my favorite Parisian sandwich, the croque madame, which is essentially a fancy grilled ham and cheese sandwich with a fried egg on top that takes twice the amount of time as a normal grilled ham and cheese sandwich to actually prepare, but it's delicious. While I'm cooking, I'm going to be telling you the story of the LaRoche family, the only known black passengers aboard the Titanic. If you're not familiar with this story, don't fret. Until about a month ago, I had never heard of them either, which is bad. We should all know about them. As you may have already guessed, this tale is tragic. So, strap on your life vest, grab onto a door, and whatever you do, don't let go. Okay, let's get cooking. Joseph Philippe Le Mercier La Roche, the only passenger of known African ancestry who died on the Titanic, was born on May 26th 1889 in Cape Haitian, Haiti. He was the son of a white French army captain and a Haitian woman who was a descendant of Jean-Jacques Dessalines, Emperor of Haiti, who proclaimed his country's independence in 1804. La Roche's uncle, Michel Cincinnatus Leconte, was president of Haiti from 1911 to 1912. Joseph LaRoche grew up among the privileged upper class in Haiti, which allowed him to receive most of his early education from private tutors. Fluent in French and English, he decided on a career in engineering, and at the age of 15 traveled to Beauvais, France with his teacher Monsignor Curzisson, the Lord Bishop of Haiti, for his training. He attended classes in Beauvais and Lille, France. While visiting nearby Villejuif, Joseph met and fell in love with Juliette Lefargu, the daughter of a widowed Paris wine merchant, who he met through his English teacher Maurice Lefargu, Juliette's brother. It is said that initially, Juliette's father rejected Joseph's request for Juliette's hand in marriage, on the grounds that Joseph had not yet finished his schooling and did not yet have a job to support himself or a family. However, after receiving his certificate in engineering in 1907 and beginning his career as an engineer working for the Paris Underground, Juliet's father supported the union. On March 18, 1908, La Roche married Juliet and they wasted no time in starting their family. A little under a year after they were married, they welcomed their first daughter, Simone, born on February 19, 1909. About a year after that, little Marie Louise was born prematurely on July 2, 1910. Although LaRoche worked briefly on the Paris Metro line, he had great difficulty finding and keeping a job in France due to racial discrimination. As a consequence, the new family was forced to reside with Juliet's father. Their youngest child, Marie Louise, had medical problems which also strained the family's finances. In 1911, Joseph made the decision to return to Haiti with his family and take up a job as a math and physics teacher at the secondary school. And by 1912, they were expecting a third child. Overjoyed at the news that her son would be returning to Haiti, LaRoche's mother sent the family first class tickets to travel aboard the La France ocean liner. However, the ship's policy banning children dining with their parents in the dining room led LaRoche to exchange their first class tickets for the La France for second class tickets on the RMS Titanic. Just as a side note, it is said that second class tickets on the Titanic were the equivalent to first class tickets on just about every other luxury ship at that time. So they weren't exactly a step taking a step down so much as a lateral move on their part. On April 10, 1912, 
LaRoche and his family boarded the Titanic from the harbor of Grand Rad near Fort de la Quest. The LaRoches enjoyed the opulent amenities of the ship, dining in the same dining room as its first class passengers. In a letter addressed to her father and sent from Titanic's final stop of Queenstown, Ireland, Juliette LaRoche wrote of Titanic's luxury and friendly fellow fa travelers. She said, The arrangements could not be more comfortable. We have two bunks in our cabin, and the two babies sleep on a sofa that converts into a bed. One is at the head, the other at the bottom. A board put before them prevents them from falling. They're as well, if not better, than in their beds. At the moment, they are strolling on the enclosed deck with Joseph. Louise is in her pram, and Simone is pushing her. They already have become acquainted with pe people we made the trip from Paris with, a gentleman and his lady, and their little boy too, who is the same age as Louise. I think they are the only other French people on the boat, so we sat at the same table so we could chat together. Simone was so funny. She was playing with a young English girl who had lent her a doll. My Simone was having a great conversation with her, but the girl did not understand a single word. People on board are very nice. Yesterday, they both were running after a gentleman who had given them chocolates. However, some reports state that the couple was subjected to stares and some insults from fellow passengers and crew who frowned upon their interracial marriage. On April 14th, after four days of uneventful sailing, Titanic struck an iceberg 370 miles off the coast of Newfoundland. With only enough lifeboats for about half of its 2,200 passengers, the liner so famously described as practically unsinkable was ill-prepared for the circumstance, and the closest rec rescue vessel, Carpathia, was 58 miles away. According to Juliet's account, a steward woke the family and rushed them above decks to lifeboats. Juliet spoke no English and was generally confused about what was happening. Somehow, Joseph had the wherewithal to stuff the pockets of his coat with money and jewels and took his wife and children up to the boat deck. Juliet followed her husband to the boat deck and sometime after midnight, crew members were given the order to load women and children first. Because of how slowly the ship was sinking, one account states that Joseph actually had time to comfort little Louise who was screaming for a bottle during the whole ordeal by climbing down the ropes and into the lifeboat to give her a bottle of milk. He wrapped the coat full of valuables around his wife and his last words to her were, here, take this, you're going to need it. I'll get another boat, God be with you, I'll see you in New York. Then he climbed back up onto the deck because men were not allowed in the lifeboat. Joseph LaRoche died in the sinking of the Titanic his body was never recovered. His wife, Juliette, returned to Paris with her daughters and gave birth to their son, Joseph Le Mercier La Roche, on December 17, 1912. After the sinking of the Titanic, the White Star Line extended a public apology for the racism exhibited by its crew members toward non-white passengers, including La Roche. One of the reasons why many people have never heard this story is because it was so traumatic for Juliet. In fact, she barely spoke of the event after that day. And in an interview by La Presse de la Manche on twenty on the twentieth of April, nineteen ninety six, Marie Louise was actually interviewed, and she said. We had all been terribly affected. My mother has great difficulty talking about the disaster, and she kept those atrocious images with her for the rest of her life. We also received no compensation until 1918, and so ran into extreme financial difficulty. For example, my mother brought us up with her fear of traveling, and it is because of this that I never went to Boston when the Titanic Historical Society Want to bring together the survivors. Louise LaRoche died in on, tw on the 28th of January 1998 at the age of 87. Her death left six remaining survivors. Thank you again for joining me here on Office Hours, hanging out with me in my office and listening to this story. If you've heard the story before and I pronounced anything incorrectly, sorry to all the French friends 
I probably butchered some of those names and stuff and places, but French is not my first nor second language, so there you go. I did the best I could. But if you've heard this story and there were any errors, you noticed any mistakes, please feel free to leave that information, the corrections, friendly corrections, hopefully, in the comment section below. If you've never heard this story before and you enjoyed it, please leave that positive feedback in the comment section below. I will include a link in the description box for the uh, recipe for the croque madame, so if you'd like to try it yourself, fun little French recipe that you can do on a rainy day and pair it with some soup. Might be nice. Oh, wee oui, oui. I don't really sound like that. I don't know why. That's an American thing. I don't know why Americans do that. It's mean. Stop it. Stop it, Americans. Anyway, if you like this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more great content. Ciao for now.